a very warm welcome and thank you so much for allowing me into your sacred space. And you are tuned into the Chick Chat. Today's guest is a very dear friend of mine, a mother anthropologist and a master's in sociology student. We're going to be talking all things motherhood and academia. Can I go get a little ring? Unpack. Honey, today we're unpacking. Today's episode is extremely special because the person joining me on the show today is a very good friend of mine. Welcome to the show. Yay, I'm so excited to be here finally. <laughs> Love having you here. You look so beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I'm always mesmerized by people who come to the show. They all look so stunning. Not as stunning as you, though. She's lying. <laughs> so I want to know, this is a very random question, and I think I'm not asking you for the first time. Are you related to the legendary actor? Joe Marcella. <laughs> oh my gosh, this question. I think I need to get a million every time somebody asks me. Mm. Mafera, like Joe Mafera. Oh, so it's Mafera. Mafera. Oh, I thought it's Mafela. No, it's Venda, so the L has that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, well, the way my father says it is that he is related to us, but you know that thing you're with family and then somebody decides to break off and do their own thing and then you lose contact. Mm. So we are related, but we are not close. We are not family. I don't even mm. know people that are his family. Mm. Okay, I understand. And you grew up in the Mafera household. <laughs> you were raised by your grandparents. How was it growing up there? It was, I mean, most times it was fun. You know, grandparents like to four kids and all that, but I mean, there was also a lot of, um, how can I say, a lot of uh, conflict, um, a lot of moments that weren't so great. But overall, I think I, I did pretty well. What was your fondest memory of your childhood? Um, my grandfather used to have this thing when we moved to Nigeria. Every weekend, he'd take us to the mall. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we were kids, the mall was like... Exciting. You know, we'd go out to the mall... Regard the ice cream takeaways. Takeaways was a, uh, I mean, hello, you eating takeaways. Mm. <laughs> so that I think that was the best thing for me. Yeah. Mm. And you speak of um, conflict and a turbulent childhood. May you please just paint that image for me of your childhood. Um, I think uh, alcoholism. My grandfather used to drink a lot, and when he would drink, it was not very pretty. And obviously, that in turn made Tilela Morona. Mm. He'd come back home, start fights with everybody and it was very difficult because when he came back he would literally feel like you're walking on eggshells because mm -hmm. you don't know what's gonna happen what is he gonna do what's gonna um like what what's gonna happen every time and it was very distressing for somebody who was a child you know mm -hmm. to go through that even if you know okay it's the weekend it's gonna happen when it happens it's still you know it still hits you very hard mm -hmm. and how how did that affect your childhood at the time i don't think i thought about it but it, it, it obviously made me develop certain personality traits to help myself to survive that mm -hmm. uh, very difficult time. So I was very defensive because I felt like I always had to defend myself. I was very, I, I tried to protect myself as much as I can. So that meant pushing people away. Or if I found somebody who I thought liked me or was not going to bring any conflict, I would stick to them. So I had a very obsessive um, nature about me. Mm, obsessive about non-conflict? Yes, about pe if somebody I thought we got along well, then I would literally like, you know, on that person because they made me feel safe. I want to know if your childhood influences your interest in childhood traumas and overcoming them. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I would say that my childhood um, has has sparked a huge interest within me to find out about what childhood trauma is and how you can heal from that. Because the moment I became or found that I was going to be a mother. I knew that I needed to do the work. I knew that something in me had to change because the person I was, I knew I did not want my kids to experience that person. Mm. And that's not an attack against uh, the me at that time. It's just acknowledging that you are at a place where you cannot handle certain things and you need to work on yourself and heal certain things because um, a very famous um, psychologist who I love, Dr. Shefali Sabari, says that to be a good parent, you need to raise yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to raise your inner child, you need to heal your inner child and look at your inner child so that you can be the parent that your kids need. Mm -hmm. It's not about what, 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 what am I going to do different from my parents? What am I going to give my kids that my, 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 my parents didn't give me? It's about what does your child need from you? 
you know, a lot of parents would be like, if I can not get private school, I want my kids to experience this and that. But is that what your child needs? You know, do you, did you have that dialogue and did you connect with your child enough to know that that's what your mm. child wants and needs at that time? Mm. So for me, that was very, very important. Mm. This is very interesting because it leads into my next question. I want to ask you how motherhood is and if there are any challenges to it. <laughs> I want to know because I'm not a mother. The most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my life because um, there's a there's a philosophy that says that the people around you mirror the things in you that you need to heal if you are willing to be aware of it and do the work. So my kids have literally made me see the type of person that I was and the things that I needed to work on for myself. And I'm very grateful for them because... Um, They've helped me to grow exponentially in the three years that I've been a mother to them. I've grown so much and I've, I've, I've made it a point to be able to connect with them to a point where I could see those things, mm. you know, and to be what they needed and show up as my best self and show up for them as much as I can. But I want to know how motherhood has been. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, well, motherhood has been challenging. It's been very difficult. It hasn't always been easy, but it's very rewarding. I feel like it's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Mm. It happened at the very right time because um, it helped me um, to take a closer look to my, at myself and work on myself for myself. Mm. And I love how you don't romanticize it. I love that, you know, because a lot of black parents are on some, nah, it's the best thing that you could ever do. But you're like, nah, like there was a time where I actually neglected myself yeah. because of motherhood. Mm. And I want to know if there are parts of you that you neglected, that you've restored. Mm, mm, definitely i um thing number one is self-care well you know when you're a mother you want to do the best for your kids so you overperform and you don't take care of yourself you don't rest enough you don't ask for help because you want to do everything for yourself so it got to a point where like i was exhausted and uh, when you when you don't take care of yourself and you don't um pour into your own cup you end up resenting the people um close to you and that for me obviously meant i would start resenting my own kids which is i mean Hello. Mm. So I knew I needed to do something else because as much as I was doing the work on myself, I was neglecting myself also, which was kind of weird. But, you know, so mm. I decided that every single day I do something for myself and I've taught them to, to understand when I say I need a moment, give me space. You know, I mean, they won't literally go away, but mm. they'll be like, give me space. OK, <laughs> <laughs> Which is cool because I want them to understand boundaries because I grew up mm. in a house without boundaries. So I want them to understand when I say something, I mean it. Mm. I don't I don't change my mind. If something is set in stone, it's set in stone unless if we negotiate it. Mm. And it's like, okay, we need to change it because of ABC. Mm. Um, I want to go back to childhood trauma, but like also link it to high school. We had a conversation before this interview and you said, because we like teasing each other a lot in high school, right? And you said that traumatized you, you know, and I want to take this moment to apologize for that moment because we don't know when we're creating these things, you know, it's like, it's a joke, but yeah. actually it damages somebody. And I wanted to say, I'm so sorry for that moment. And I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. I know you weren't doing it to hurt me, even if it did hurt me. And mm. I get where it was coming from because that's a culture that we have as, as, kids as peers you know mm. we tease each other we think that's what you should do mm. but you do that without knowing the insecurities that somebody has and you are playing exactly into that insecurity mm. which is very painful for the other person but they'll just play along because i mean yeah. for me you play mm. you know so it's okay I, i'm glad you also <laughs> <laughs> we need to we have to i feel like it's so important that even when something has happened like long ago mm. we have to come to a place where we're like you know what i'm sorry about yeah. that you know um, and again, I was speaking to people who went to high school with you and they all had the same thing to say about you. What? Like they were like, Wendy was very, like she loved debating. She was, she always thought outside the box. She was not like a conventional thinker. And um, what else did they say? They said, um, you're very level headed. And I want to know then because i was also very interested in how you think when we were in high school you know it was you were very curious you were very not um on the surface person you went deep into things and i want to know if there was a moment then when you knew that you were going to go into academia honestly i can't say i knew i think i just thought i was just that person i liked reading i liked i was I'm, like like you said i'm a curious person i've always been curious but I think it played well into what I'm doing now because that means that's exactly where I'm supposed mm. to be. So um, I'm glad that I, I, I found out early 
what I wanted to do. Mm. Because I always ask myself, what is my purpose? What am I going to do? Yes, career, you know, the world we live in demands you to have a career, demands you to have a job, to do this and that. But for me, it's more of this that I'm doing fulfills me from the deepest levels of my being. Mm. And I found that, and that makes me so happy. Mm. You majored in... um anthropology and geography and then you went to do your honors in anthropology and now you're doing your master's in sociology girl what happened there you keep jumping into the next thing i mean honestly because everything is in humanities it's literally almost the same thing they're all very interesting perspectives to view the world and Mm. humans so for me that's why i felt like i needed to change because i already know the anthropological perspective and i've done the work there Mm. so now the view that i want to use for the project that i'm working on is sociological because i want to look at individuals and groups and how certain um norms and rules are, are negotiated and um, how they play into the things that happen in the world, whether it's a social ill, whether it's um, good things that have happened. What is the focus of your research paper? So the focus of my research paper is um, consent, specifically sexual consent. I want to know why and how people misunderstand it because the rate of rape, sexual assault, sexual violence in South Africa is very high. We are dubbed the rape capital of the Mm-mm, world. So sad. That is scary mm. it's, 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 it's honestly for me i want to do this because i really want people to see that rape is not just rape there's power involved but there's a lot of other um things that are under that patriarchy there's um the culture around sex in south africa is very it's it's, it's there's a lot that's going on yeah there's uh, there's instances where you have sex with somebody you don't want to but you do it mm. you don't say no so it's not mm. you, you get you coerced into it exactly. yeah coercion is not always physical it's mm. not always i teach you and i put a gun to your head i can convince you when you start convincing somebody to have sex with you it's no longer consensual mm. you use your power over that person that mm. person said yes because of you not mm. because of them yeah we can kiss but if i don't want to have sex i don't want to mm. kissing you is not an automatic yes to sex I had a conversation with a friend of mine in 2016 mm-hmm. and she said something that never left me. She said, mm-hmm. consent is an ongoing yes. yes. If there's it's a ongoing. point where I, I'm like, no, mm-hmm. then it should stop, exactly. you know. Um, and I find that very interesting because people just don't get it, you know. We it's, don't get it. Yeah. And we don't use it also in our own lives. Mm. If I've had sex with you once, whether we're married, whether we're in a relationship, you need to find out if I want to have sex the next time. Even if it's the same night, we have sex once. Mm. Are you sure that I want to do it again? Mm. I may not want to. Yes. But because you think, um, a lot of men think that if we've had sex once, I mean, mm. it's not about that. Sex is very complex and people don't get that. It's not just mm. about sexual gratification, especially for women. Mm. And maybe it should be so for men too, because mm. they don't have that connection to themselves to understand that consent is a very deep thing i mm. need to say yes yes okay, don't convince me yeah. don't force me don't make me drink mm. and then get into my pants that's not what sex should be mm. and we don't get that it's, yeah it's, very sad. it's scary actually it's, it's so scary. scary i want to know what the future looks like am i going to be calling you dr mafela soon i mean hello <laughs> like, <laughs> like hello. my friends are doctors guys <laughs> I definitely want to get there, but it's not going to be mm. with what I'm doing now. I think I Go! Can. How many times are you going to change these degrees? <laughs> Guys, I have a lot of interest. Mm. And for me, research will always be my passion. And I know where I'm going, I'm still going to use it. So I want to do psychology. I'll be a doctor of psychology. Hmm. 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 Let's go. You see smart people. <laughs> smart people, guys. Guys, black people are suffering. And mm. I want to be an anchor that's going to help. Mm. black people with their mental health we yeah. deserve to have healthy families healthy family dynamics healthy absolutely relationships with ourselves and the people yes. around us and that's why i'm so passionate about that mm. i love it thank you so much for joining us it was thank i loved having you, having you. I, this was so educational guys that is all from me and the doctor in the making we are about to tap out but we do keep it alive on social media it is at tembisa content tv on facebook we are also on insta grizzly and twitter it is tembisa underscore ctv Kombaya chabera ah Boom!